Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Sandra Subotich. Um, I want to talk about a case that I just did uh, with a woman with rheumatoid arthritis. She's had it for years, gone to see a number of different practitioners, um, including Western medicine, got no relief. Um, she came to see me. I want to tell you guys a little bit about her backstory. So she was married, um, started a company with her previous husband. The marriage fell apart, uh, a lot of stress. She ended up getting divorced, which flared her joint pain and her rheumatoid arthritis, as you could imagine. She ended up getting remarried and starting a company with her new husband. Um, that marriage turned out to be a failure as well. Um, so she ended up getting out of that relationship and then not being able to work. So when she came to see me, uh, she hadn't been working for probably about a year. Um, she came into the office and she had gone to see a functional medicine practitioner, which had done a bunch of lab testing on her. Um, so I actually had some lab results to see from the beginning. So she came in and I took her pulses and kind of heard what she had to say. And I decided to put her on a combo of Shao Chai Hu Tong and San Ren Tong. And within, I would say the first week she came back and was floored. I mean, her joint pain was lessened. Um, she had been fighting a cold that went away. She was actually functioning without pain and she was thrilled. And so, you know, I was, I was very excited. I said, okay, that's great. You know, let's just keep taking them and, and see where it goes. So four weeks and her pain is non-existent. And I had the functional medicine doctor retest her and her labs all came back normal. So her C-reactive protein was normal, her anti-DNA DS was normal, and she couldn't be more thrilled. We are going to go ahead and put her through um, the entire fibrochronic fatigue protocol um, because based on her pulses and her tongue, she could really utilize that. But I mean, she was thrilled. So this is someone that has gone years with this chronic pain, debilitating pain. Um, you know, she was in tears actually when she came in talking about how you know, it flared all the time and she couldn't move and she was depressed and anxious because, you know, she had this family and these marriages that had fallen apart. So imagine someone like that coming to you and four weeks later being virtually out of pain. She got together with a girlfriend of hers and they decided to get together and start a company. They're doing great and she's feeling hopeful and happy and you know a lot of things that patients say to me especially with chronic pain when the pain starts going away is they can't believe how debilitating it is and how much it affects every aspect of your life and i think they don't get that perspective until the pain starts going away and they start to realize oh my god what have i been living with like now i actually have energy i actually have motivation to do things in my life to be productive to be happy um, and it's quite an interesting shift in perspective and it can happen really really quickly and she's a she's a wonderful example of that it's pretty amazing first of all let's look at the herbs and see how plausible this really is one of the main herbs is chaihu radix bupleri in the journal biomedical research international 2017 there's an article called radix bupleri a review of traditional uses Botany, Biochemistry, Pharmacology, and Toxicology by Yang Fu de Dong Xiao Xu et al. They said radix bupleri exhibited various biological activities such as anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, antipyretic, antimicrobial, antiviral, hepatoprotective, neuroprotective, and immunomodulatory effects. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, but that's one herb. What does it say about the formula as a whole? Well, to dig into that, I looked at the Compendium of Traditional Chinese Medicine by Li Jingwei and the Funky Bunch by People's Medical Publishing House 2004. Xiao Chai Hu Tang is reported to be anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antipyretic, analgesic, meaning it kills pain and reduces heat. It regulates immunity, and it has an antibiotic effect. She also used a formula with this called Sanren Tang, which works almost exclusively with gut microbiota. Could there be something deeper 
beyond the immunoregulatory effect of Xiao Chai Hu Tang, especially since so many of these herbs are working directly on the gut microbiota. In Nature Reviews Immunology, Michelle G. Rooks and her partner in crime, Wendy S. Garrett, said in their delicious article, Gut Microbiota, Metabolites, and Host Immunity, microbial communities, their metabolites, and components are not only necessary for immune homeostasis, they also influence the susceptibility of the host to many immune-mediated diseases and disorders. So if you have an autoimmune disorder, it really pays to look at the guts. All right, so this has my attention. I'm looking even deeper. So I looked into my mint condition, March 15th, 2016 issue of Cell Press to read what Pawan Kumar and Leticia Monin and the gang found regarding gut microbiota and autoimmunity. Apparently, intestinal interleukin-17 receptor signaling controls gut microbiota and autoimmune inflammation. These are crucial for helping drive T helper cell development in the gastrointestinal tract. All right, that's amazing. So it looks like we need to control interleukin-17. Does anything in Dr. Sabotich's formula of Xiao Chai Hu Sanren influence this. According to Shui Yang, Ji Yang, and He Jian Zhou, a component of Huang Qin, Bicolin, inhibits interleukin-17 mediated joint inflammation in murine adjuvant-induced arthritis. Okay, case closed. So that means we just need to use Bicolin, right? That cures rheumatoid arthritis. If we can just isolate this, it'll work much better. Well, actually, no. It will drop inflammation, has this effect, but long-term, we have to look at cultivating the gut and how that influences long-term immune regulation. And to do this, we have to look at the relationship of liposaccharides and blood toxicity. Liposaccharides are also called endotoxins. They're lipid-soluble components of gram-negative bacteria. The bacteria colonized in the intestinal tract are a major source of liposaccharides in people. Uh, it's important to remember that liposaccharides can be translocated from the intestine to the blood circulation, which is nasty. So the grosser your diet, the more these endotoxins are kicking around the gut, and the more they get into your bloodstream. This causes something called endotoxemia, and that's associated further with stress. So it seems that liposaccharides will gum up the tight junctions. This causes more intestinal permeability, and stress also increases this intestinal permeability, causing your blood to be sort of full of shit, and that influences people's temperament, it influences you know, personality shifts, memory, and it really screws up the endocrine system as well. So before we get into that, we're gonna look at some enterotypes. So we look at ancient ideas of a yin body or a yang body. So a yang body is thin and a yin body is fat. And maybe if we look at Greco-Roman medicine, we have uh, maybe somebody who's more phlegmatic versus sanguine. Well, they're starting to look at the proportions of bacteria in the body, like Bacteroides and Firmicutes, and looking at which ones, which percentages of one versus the other will cause people to be fat or lean, and uh, which types, basically, the chunkier you are, the more likely you are to have the um, enterotype leaning toward Firmicutes, and the endotoxemia associated with the obesity and autoimmune disorders. Now, this can happen in people who are not obese. It's just kind of a shorthand. If you're obese or you see someone who's obese, you're more likely to have that. It's also really cool because a high-fat diet will increase this. However, for all of you ketogenic fans, worry not. The ketogenic diet actually um, decreases it. So a high-fat diet, you know, like you're eating bacon with your cornflakes, then the liposaccharides and endotoxins are going to be spiking and held up being held up in your body for much longer but if you're ketogenic that's not the case the modern diet with preservatives and heavy fat consumption causes excess liposaccharides and these cause internal chaos so liposaccharides have risen in the u.s diet 
Over the last 50 years, along with obesity and prevalence of diabetes, now it's spiking in China as people can afford to eat more meat. The shift from a plant-based diet to a more meat and fat and grain kind of diet is associated with increased obesity, lowered fertility, and autoimmune disorders. So while we can shift our diets to help a lot, that doesn't necessarily clean the blood directly. So we can shift our gut microbiome rather quickly, but the damage caused by years of endotoxins getting in there, by bacteria going right into the blood, bacteria we don't want there, holding up and causing microbial biofilms with fungi, bacteria, and uh, viruses teaming up to eat you, tear you apart. These have to be dissolved over time. So that's why there are herbs in this formula that dissolve the biofilms. In this case, it wasn't simply that, oh, well, the patient took some herbs that shifted the gut flora. Yes, that's true. Yes, the interleukin-17 was directly addressed, but also there was an aspect of it that was directly cleansing the blood itself and removing biofilms and these uh, toxic buildups in the body. And this is really important because liposaccharides engage in something called molecular mimicry. And this is why everybody thinks that they have a thyroid problem. They have a thyroid deficiency. They have a testosterone deficiency, an endocrine problem of some sort. However, don't get derailed. This derails Western medicine practitioners. This derails Chinese medical practitioners because it looks like a deficiency and everybody wants to nourish that deficiency. However, if the patient is not starving and running through the woods, digging up roots and scratching for occasional worms, they probably have no real deficiency. Even hormonally, their adrenals may not be as burned out as they look. There's a lot of molecular mimicry that goes on with these liposaccharides. And in particular, the molecular mimicry of the host structures by the saccharide portion of the liposaccharides are associated with the development of autoimmune sequelae. And they, they mimic these endocrine problems. So people will say, oh, I'm cold all the time. And in Chinese medicine, they'll say, oh, okay, well, uh, let's boost your kidney yang. And they go to a functional medicine doctor and they say, well, let's just add more thyroid to it or we'll give you a pellet of testosterone. This causes short-term benefits, but in the long run, it actually makes the problem worse. Whether or not it's associated with the doctor or not, it is making the problem worse if it's actually caused by these liposaccharides. And in this day and age, more often than not, it is. So this is why we can't look at an exact herb to fill in the hole. We can't look at uh, one herb like, okay, the huangqin, the bicolin, is just going to save the day through interleukin-17. No, that's not going to work. If it was, this whole thing would be much easier. It's essential in these cases to carefully clean the blood, restore gut harmony, and remove the molecular mimicry so that the body can do what it needs to do without being nourished in ways that it doesn't need to be nourished. That actually just causes a traffic jam. So the brilliance of Dr. Sabotich's work is that she didn't overdo it. You know, you've got a stick in the spokes of a bicycle. It doesn't mean you need to pedal harder. It means you just need to remove the stick. Sometimes it's doing less and getting rid of what's in the way that's the most important. It's all too easy, especially for natural health folks, to just think we just need to nourish people to health. But that is not the case. Sometimes all that nourishment goes right to the wrong kinds of bacteria, feeds them, gums them up, and then they start to gnaw through your intestines get right through those tight junctions and start polluting your body and making you ferocious and nasty and causing your joints to swell, it's not a good time. So look at what's wrong, remove it, and save the overdoing it for, I don't know, interior decorating. Keep in mind that the exact herbs that she used, Chao Chai Hu and Sanren, are not what's important. What's important is that you're looking at modern people with modern challenges, and you're considering that first, rather than going to an ancient textbook, forgetting that our GI tract, our enterotypes, are perhaps very different from struggling farmers. If you're not taking that into consideration, then you may not be accurately serving your patients. Now, for that particular formula, 
we call it WIND. And if you're a practitioner, you can find it on botanicalbiohacking.com. Sign up for a practitioner account. We have highest quality on the planet as measured by labs. We actually have the Chaihu, and this is well crafted from the Tibetan Plateau. This is the highest quality on earth. However, if you're using general uh, C grade quality, which is generally available, it's also very good. So just because we have extraordinary quality doesn't mean that it won't work unless it's extraordinary quality. It just means that the patient may get there faster with fewer side effects. So if you're a practitioner, keep that in mind. Thanks so much for listening to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. And thank you so much, Dr. Sandra Sabotich, for your incredible work. I love you all and make sure you get to sleep on time. I know you, you know, you stay up at night and all of that, but, um, you know, the blue blocker sunglasses will only do so much. Try to get to sleep early and, you know, really take care of your body.